Okay, so out of the top 10 trouble codes as rated by the state of Wisconsin for the federal EPA that tracks all these things for reasons for emissions failures, one of the most common ones that gives mechanics a lot of time, a lot of hard time in trying to diagnose is a P0420 code. P0420 code means bank one catalyst below threshold. Now, the most common cause for this is probably gonna turn out to be a bad catalytic converter, but it could also be an exhaust leak somewhere in the system. It could even actually be a, um, an actual bad cat sensor on the vehicle. So what do we do? Honestly, the easiest and most precise way I've ever found to diagnose this, this uh, catalyst efficiency style code is gonna be with that calculator that we talked about earlier. What I like about this calculator, before I had the calculator, yeah, you could measure the inlet temperatures and the outlet temperatures of the catalytic converter. You can do all the stuff that you've already heard about before. But let's put a different spin on this thing and let's actually use this diagnostic calculator because what I like about it is, it will not only tell me and confirm the fact I do need a catalytic converter, but it's gonna tell me which one of those three precious metals are bad inside that converter. So I take my gas analyzer and I hook it up to the vehicle. When I take my gas analyzer and hook it up to the vehicle, I'm gonna be getting out obviously the HC, the CO, the O2, and the CO2 readings, right? I can even pull out the NOx reading as well, So if it's a five gas. So I'm gonna be getting those, those five readings and I'm gonna plug them into my diagnostic calculator. It's gonna give me a percentage as to what each one of those three areas of the catalytic converter is capable of doing, how much it's degraded, how good it is. So my HC calculator, my CO calculator, all that stuff is all being displayed for me. And obviously I can go ahead and say, okay, if my NOx reading is what's failing, if that's the part of the catalytic converter that's no longer doing its job, well, I know that that's the rhodium. Uh, precious metal inside. If my HC and, o and CO is what's causing this whole thing to, to go high and fail, that's the part that degraded in the converter, then I know my platinum and palladium in the converter is bad. Those are the three precious metals that make a three-way cat function the way how it's supposed to. Again, it's not really that type of class. AVI's got tons of programs on, on gas analysis. But what I like about it is I know for a fact how bad this converter is. I like to use this as an, another example as well. A lot of times on, especially imports, if you put it on an aftermarket converter, that 420 code is fixed for a short period of time, but it's gonna come back on probably in six months to a year because they just, if the factory converter costs six or $700 from the dealership and you call up your local parts store and they say, yeah, yeah, we got a universal one that you could put on there, it costs 80 bucks. Well, what do you think is the difference in price? It's the amount of the, the precious metals that they're putting in that catalytic converter. So it's not gonna obviously have as much platinum, palladium, and rhodium in it. And you could see this and verify this with this little volumetric efficiency calculator. But again, if you don't happen to have this calculator, then obviously you can measure the inlet and outlet temperatures of the converter. And the way that you guys have, have tested for this code, if it's a bad converter like you have been for years in the past. So if I have an exhaust leak that's before the converter that it's actually acting as a venturi, every time I step on the gas and take my foot off the gas, a little bit of oxygen goes inside the exhaust stream. Well, you could get a false code in there, which is telling you you got a P0420 code. Well, if you, they, and you might not even hear the exhaust leak because it only does it under deacceleration because it's sucking outside air in. Well, this calculator really shines in this area. No way of converter temperature testing or anything before that that we've talked about can actually determine it. You'd have to either use an old-fashioned smoke machine and do it on every single car in the exhaust tailpipe to see if you have an exhaust leak, or this calculator has the ability to say, well, I'm getting some pirate air coming from someplace. So now you're going to have to go, they call it the exhaust um, oxygen dilution factor. So if I see that that factor is extremely high, I'm going to say, hey, I'm, getting, I'm sucking some outside air. So this is another quick go or no go style test to tell me, hey, do I happen to have a bad converter for this 420 code? So on a side note, since we're talking about gas analysis, I told you guys I'd talk about the, the whole lambda reading. Here's, here's the downside to a modern day gas analyzer. If you're using a four or five gas analyzer that can only display you know, the O2, the CO2, 
the NOx levels, the hydrocarbon levels, everything that we've been talking about. If you're only using that style gas analyzer and it does not have a lambda reading, through the act of combustion, mixture changes. So I'm measuring how much oxygen is left after I burn up the majority of it in the combustion chamber. And then as it goes through the catalytic converter, obviously, again, the converter is going to change that, those mixtures as well. So basically, again, not a five gas class, but if I wanted to clean up hydrocarbons, I'd have to add oxygen to hydrocarbons. That turns it into H2O, right? If I want to clean up CO, carbon monoxide, I have to add oxygen to CO to turn it into CO2, carbon dioxide. NOx is your heat and load indicator. Hey, that's going to I got to take away the heat or load of the engine to go ahead and clean that up. Actually, richer mixtures help because it cools off the, the, the combustion chamber. So that's the main difference between those. Catalytic converters and the act of combustion has such a great effect on those gases. But lambda, what does lambda do? Lambda measures the amount of atoms that's introduced into the engine. Now, the amount of atoms does not change whether or not we catch them on fire in the combustion chamber and after we burn them going through a catalytic converter, the amount of atoms are still the same. So our target value for lambda should be a one. Anytime I have a higher reading than a one on my gas analyzer that reads lambda, that represents it's running lean. Anytime I have a lower value, it represents it's running rich. So you're in essence able to take an inside view as to whether or not the engine was fueled correctly whether or not it has all kinds of computer controls and gasoline direct injection and every other newest and greatest little tidbit that the car manufacturers want to put on it, this is just measuring the amount of atoms that it sees going into the engine compared to what's coming out of the tailpipe. That's where the real diagnostic value is in looking at a lambda reading to determine whether or not the engine was fueled correctly or not. If it wasn't, now you know from the stuff we've talked previously in this presentation where to look. You know, do I have dirty fuel injectors? Do I have whatever? You know, you have enough common sense to know where to, what I should be looking for as to why it possibly wasn't fueled correctly.